What's up, everybody? Happy Tuesday. Hope all you had a great day so far. Getting into this episode of GH, um, I'm still completely shocked that they killed Neil off. Like, I'm totally surprised by that. I was not expecting them to kill him off. Um, I feel bad for Alexis. Like, I really do. Like, she finally, finally, finally found a pretty good guy. You know, a guy who doesn't have a dark past, a guy who's not affiliated with organized crime, a guy who doesn't sit there and lie to her constantly or try to kill her. You know what I mean? She found a really good, genuine guy, a good career. You know what I mean? Like, he's not into any craziness. He's not crazy. And he ups and dies after she done gave him the punani. Like, that's crazy. Like, I had a feeling Alexis had that kill. But I didn't know it was, like, literally killer. Mm-mm-mm. Mm. Alexis be putting it down in the bedroom. Damn, she be having dudes ODing. Like, that's crazy. I feel bad for her. Like, Alexis was just crying. Like, she just was inconsolable. Like, I was like, oh, my God. I feel so bad for her. And, you know, of course, Valerie, I, I see they, they using Valerie a little bit more than they used to. You know, she's in two episodes in a row. So I was like, OK, all right. Now, episode number two, when they got Valerie in two episodes straight, I said, OK. Now, let's see if we can up the ante a little bit and get Valerie into some more episodes. Like, damn, if you're going to have the actress here, you might as well use her. Right. I'm just saying. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, Valerie had to ask her some questions about what happened or whatever. And the paramedics believed that Neil had a heart attack because Alexis was shocked by that because she didn't know Neil had some any type of heart condition or anything like that. Well, if he did, I'm pretty sure, you know, he probably just didn't see the need to tell her that right away, probably, you know, especially when he was dealing with so much. Like, I totally feel bad for, uh for Alexis like that's just crazy like it's like in the love department she could not catch a damn break like I know it's gonna take her a minute to get over this like I wouldn't be surprised if Alexis just feels like maybe she was meant to be alone or something but I think there's love out there for everybody you know just because you had a lot of bumps in the road don't mean you should stop but you know I still say it sucks that they killed off Neil like that just stinks um, so anyway, moving on from that. So Carly's sitting here having dreams and nightmares about Nell being alive and stalking her, basically. Um, <laughs> oh man. Like, Carly, I think, is just having guilt. Like, I think it's her conscience. Because Nell fell... She's lying to the cops. She still hasn't told Michael and Willow what really happened. She hasn't told Sonny what's really happened. And I think it's just her mind just playing. It's her conscience playing with her. You know what I mean? Because she obviously feels guilty. Because she feels like she's keeping this secret. And as bad as she wants to tell people, she, for whatever reason, is not telling anybody. Well, mainly because Jax is basically trying to tell her, like, don't say anything. But... um. She wants to tell Sonny. You know, that's her husband. She doesn't want to keep any secrets. Um, I think Carly, I definitely get where Jax is coming from. I think Carly is secretly hoping that Nell is alive because it could take some of that pressure off of her if Nell really did survive. And Carly thinks that Nell did survive because they didn't find a body. They never saw a body. So she thinks, well, there's a big possibility that she can be alive, which is true. She could be. She very well could be alive. Nobody. It's a possibility. It's a major possibility. Um, but Carly knows that Sonny's going to be pissed when she finally does tell him the truth. And hopefully she finds a way to tell him. Um, hopefully. But I think Carly wants to tell Sonny. But the only reason she's like not telling him so far is because he's been wrapped up with the Mike situation. You know, he's dealing with Cyrus. He's dealing with Mike. Like, he's just dealing with a lot on his plate right now. And she really didn't want to add this to it as well. Even though I feel like her reason, I get her reason, but at the same time, it's kind of stupid because tell your husband, you know what I'm saying? Like, Sonny would definitely support her and protect her. 
you know, if anything, you know, the fallout and stuff like that, you can trust them enough to tell them. I understand you don't want to add one more thing to the plate, but it's like, come on now. One more sardine is not going to bust the can. Like, you might as well just tell them that's your husband, you know, because you know how Sonny is. He's going to be pissed that Jax knew about something or helped with something that he had no idea about. You know how Sonny is. So it's in your best interest to just tell him. So anyway, speaking of Sonny. So speaking of Sonny, he um, was talking to Mike or whatever, and they were talking about betting on the horses and stuff. So Sonny came up with the bright idea to take his dad to the horse race, to the track. Um, he wanted Felix to facilitate this or whatever, to make the necessary arrangements so he could take his father to the racetrack. I feel like... I mean, like I said, on this show, you have to suspend disbelief, but I feel like there's no way that a guy in the end stages of his life of Alzheimer's who was recently barely eating um, for, you know, you know, for how for however long he wasn't even eating and he's, you know, well enough to head out to the track. I don't think so, but you have to suspend disbelief. You really do. Um Carly showed up and she was surprised to see, you know, Sonny taking Mike out and Sonny basically said, well, Felix made all the medical arrangements. Like you could tell, like Carly really wants to tell Sonny about this, but she just feels guilty laying this on him, especially at a time like this. But I'm like, in my opinion, there's never going to be a right time to tell somebody, oh, me and Nell fought and the bitch fell from a cliff. You know what I'm saying? There's never going to be a right time to say that. So it's kind of like you just got to blurt it out and just say it and get it over with. You know, because the longer you wait to tell Sonny, the worse it's going to be. Like, just be honest. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. Um, so basically, Michael was just updating Jason on what happened the night before about Nell and how crazy she was acting at the cabin. Um, you know, just giving him a rundown about how Carly was chasing after Nell. So, you know, Jason got that little eyebrow where it, like, goes up when he starts thinking or, like, he feels weary about something. But Jason did give Michael his props or whatever for not cracking under the pressure because Jason felt like Nell has that effect on people where she knows how to push your buttons and piss you off to the point where you want to crack her upside her damn head. But I do agree. I mean, Michael, you know, he could have easily just smack the dog piss out of her but he didn't he he maintained his composure and i respect it um so then michael was telling jason about his kiss with willow and that it was unexpected um i agree with jason i feel like michael should just put all the cards on the table and tell willow how he really feel about her because i feel like michael has been feeling willow for quite some time and because of him and sasha being together and her and chase being together he just never admitted his attraction to her but he you know now that they're married i mean i always felt like it was inevitable that they were going to do something either mess around or they were going to kiss because once you marry somebody even though it was strictly for because you know custody purposes of the baby and basically business so i understood but at the same time i knew something eventually was going to go down the longer they stayed in this marriage i'm like Y'all gonna do something because ain't no way you're gonna be in no sexless marriage for the rest of y'all time. There's just no way in the world y'all gonna be trying to do something. Feelings are gonna get more developed than what they were. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's bound to happen. So I'm not even shocked. Um, so Willow was talking to the baby or whatever while the baby was in the crib. And um, Michael was eavesdropping on the conversation via the baby monitor. And she was just saying how, you know, she didn't expect the kiss and, but she felt, but to Willow, the kiss felt natural. But that tells me Willow been wanting that kiss to happen. I think Willow and Michael have always been attracted to each other. I think they have been, but they were being faithful to the ones that they were with at the time. But I definitely feel like they were attracted to each other for a hot minute. Um... But, you know, being the type of person that they are, they're not trying to cheat. They're not trying to hurt anybody. So they suppress those feelings. But you could kind of tell that attraction has definitely been there for both of them for quite some time. Because even Willow was like, yeah, it felt natural. Um, and Michael been wanting to talk to her about the kiss and what it means and, you know, get their feelings out there. And I think they should. But in the meantime, they headed over to the uh, hospital. 
Because, you know, Michael and Willow feel like they owe Brooklyn a debt of gratitude for helping them find uh, the baby. Which I feel like they do. Because Brooklyn's information was a huge lead for Michael. Without him knowing about that tracker, they never would he never would have knew where to find Nell. So that was a huge lead, and you know he thanked her and stuff for helping him for the sacrifice that she made. I don't know, like I just feel like Brooklyn She's gonna continue to lash out. Because now that her throat was cut and she probably, you know, her vocal cords are messed up, meaning her singing might be messed up. She's going to be lashing out at people. She's she's going to be lashing out acting brattier than ever. Because Ned was basically trying to make peace with her. He was like, you know, I'm sorry. Like, he constantly apologized to her for treating her the way that he did. Kicking her out the mansion, disowning her. Like, he genuinely kept apologizing. And she just would not listen. She was just so stubborn. She refused to listen to anything Ned had to say. She kept telling him to leave, get away from her. She's done. She don't want to, you know, deal with him or whatever. Um, she was just being stubborn. Now, don't get me wrong. I totally understand where Brooklyn's coming from because I felt like Ned maybe, you know, he took it a bit too far maybe by throwing her out and disowning her. But he had a right to be upset with her too because the moves that she was making was just so just messed up. You know what I mean? Like, she was on some selfish stuff just to help herself instead of thinking about the family and the company and all that. So I felt like he had a right to be upset and disappointed. But I think he did kind of take it too far. But she needs to learn how to grow up, though. Like this bratty temper tantrums that she be throwing. It's just ridiculous for somebody her age. Grow up. You know, be, be the adult that you are. You know what I mean? Like, grow up. Because Olivia, she kept trying to get through to Brooklyn, you know. But Brooklyn right now, she's not trying to hear nothing nobody has to say. She's really not. Um, so, of course, you know, Olivia felt like it was time for her to go because she needed to get hop on a plane with Robert to go see Dante. And, you know, Ned was upset by that because he felt like he was in crisis and now is the time he needs his wife. And I get that, but he knew she had to go see her son, and she has not seen her son in well over a year. You know, it's been a year since she's seen Dante, and she really wants to do it because Robert had to pull a lot of strings to get her this, you know, one-on-one -on -one with Dante. So it's like she doesn't want to miss out on that. And she's, in my opinion, she's done everything that she could to get Brooklyn to talk to Ned. And like she told Ned, you just have to give her some time. Give your daughter some time and she may come around. You know, she's just lashing out right now. But there's really nothing more Olivia can do. So I don't feel like it's fair if Ned got angry with Olivia and stuff because she does have a child of her own that she needs to tend to. You know what I mean? He should be more understanding of that. Because at the end of the day, the quarter mains are always going to be in some type of crisis. So, come on now. She needs to go tend to her business. She tried to help you as much as she could with Brooklyn. But right now, pushing the situation is not going to work in your favor. So, let her go be with her son and get to see her firstborn child. You know? She's been supportive of you and trying to help you uh, reconcile with your daughter. Well, be supportive with her and what she needs to do and reconcile with her son. You know? It's a two-way street. You can't expect her to be there for you all the time and you not be there for her. That's what Ned needs to understand. Marriage is a two-way street. I know it's been a long time since he's been married, but you need to understand that. Um. So anyway, moving on from that. So Nina meets with the lady Evelyn or whatever, Jax's jeweler, and... um. She says she has a way to trace the uh, the original craft, craftsmanship of the uh, the necklace in Manhattan. Um, and she gave Nina, you know, the contact information and all that stuff. But Evelyn did warn Nina that it may not, you know, it may lead to nowhere. You know, it may not lead to anything. But Nina is determined to find her child. She's very determined. Um, so of course Nina was updating Jax on it and, um, she was certain that she would be able to find her child. Um, 
then of course they start talking about Nell and Nina um, thinks that Nell will show up again but Jax is basically like he don't think the same thing I hope Jax don't give it away that you know being too obvious about it like being so sure of himself by you know how people do oh I'm sure she's not going to come back why would you be so sure unless you know something like hopefully Jax don't say something that's going to get people to start thinking like hopefully because if once you do that all it takes is one slip up one little tiny slip up to contradict Carly's story that she told the cops that's all they need is one little contradiction and boom you're got you're got like hopefully that doesn't happen but we all know with cover ups it's bound to happen somebody gonna say something wrong to get somebody to thinking and start looking in places they ain't got no damn business looking. And before you know it, everybody, you know, your business becomes everybody's business. You know how that go. So, I just don't see nothing good coming out of this little cover-up that her, that Carly and Jax are doing. Nothing good is going to come from it. Somebody going to fuck up somewhere along the line, do something dumb, say something dumb. And before you know it, Carly going to be right back in jail. <laughs> awaiting trial. So... She might as well just do something like come up with with a game plan. You know what I mean? Like cover yourself because this ain't going to last. Um, anyway, that was pretty much the whole episode. Um, hit the comment section. And let me know what y'all thought about it. I will see y'all all later. Have a good night. Peace.